1991 was my most intense year for playing DOS games. We got our first home PC, an Amstrad 286. I was so excited, I couldn't believe it. At last, I would be able to play seriously. Until now, in the 80s, I had an MSX computer and the Sega consoles, Master System, and Mega Drive. These had good action games for sure, but few adventure, RPG, and above all, simulation games, my favorite genre. F-19 Stealth Fighter, M-1 Tank Platoon, SU-25, LHX, Wolfpack, how many hours playing those? And we got our PC in the nick of time because 1991 opened a new era for DOS games, which were now all running in VGA 256 colors. But there were some tries in VGA before that, because theoretically the new format was available since 1987. But clearly neither the developers nor the end users were ready. Those few games that ventured into the new graphical possibilities were just poor adaptations from titles originally developed in EGA 16 colors. The VGA 256 colors result looked no better, and sometimes much worse than the original EGA versions. Loom or Indiana Jones The Last Crusade are perfect examples of this paradox. Then came a transition period where games running VGA began to look better. Wings Commander or Ultima 6 were already taking advantage of the new color palette before 1991 but they were still pioneers in a largely uncharted world. VGA wasn't yet the real standard. Such graphic cards were still very expensive and developers were not systematically exploiting them. And then came 1991, setting the new standard for good. Now the market was fully ready. Developers were mastering the new technology and releasing native VGA titles. From now on, it was 256 colors or nothing. And it was not only about technical specs, this year also revealed games that would become legendary because of their outstanding quality, and some of them would set up whole new genres. Just look at the brilliant titles released in 1991. Civilization. Lemmings. Eye of the Beholder. Monkey Island 2. Wing Commander 2. Might and Magic 3. The door was open to a new PC world, already resembling today's one. Of course, technology had still room for improvement. Yet I personally find that millions of colors don't add that much to standard VGA, and that in some way, the gap seemed bigger between 16 and 256 colors. And that's even more obvious for sound. In 1991, game sound effects and music were already close enough to our day's norm, so you can't really tell the difference. I don't know for you, but for me, the revolution for PC gaming was 1991.